I'm Sarah. Welcome to Just Kidding Around, a special all-kids edition of Missouri Outdoors. One of the best things about Missouri Outdoors is our abundance of water. Lakes, rivers, streams, and springs. Everywhere you turn, there are opportunities for great outdoor recreation. Like this place, Mill Stream Gardens Con When the powerful St. Francis River pushes its way through ancient granite bedrock? Shut-ins. Beautiful to look at, fun to hop around on, and truly an adventure in a kayak or a canoe. Millstream Gardens presents one of the Midwest's premier whitewater paddling opportunities. And every spring, the saint, as paddlers call it, becomes the center of the largest gathering of whitewater enthusiasts in the Midwest, the Missouri Whitewater Championship. Just hoping not to hit the rocks when I go down in this boat. <laughs> Today we're going to follow a couple of young women as they embrace the challenge and the excitement of racing on the saint. Lucky numbers right here. Yeah. Oh yeah, perfect numbers. <laughs> Of course, there are lots of ways to enjoy Missouri's waters. Oh yeah! We're going to look in as some really small kids catch some really big fish. It's Willie's Carp Camp on Truman Lake. Wow, who's catching who? And what do you get when you mix 900 kids in one of Missouri's great rivers? Lots of excitement and just a hint of chaos. Missouri River Relief's education event introduces urban kids to the amazing natural resource right in their own backyard. So how's this for a backyard? Acres Ferry on the Current River is a location well known and loved by canoeists. Isn't the river pretty? We'll be visiting the Maggard family who've lived and worked at this special location for generations. Stay tuned, there's a lot of outdoor adventure on Missouri's rivers coming up. Millstream Gardens is quiet today, but a couple of weeks ago, this was the center of the universe for paddlers from all over the Midwest. The Missouri Whitewater Championship is a time when a dedicated group of outdoor enthusiasts comes together. It's an exciting time for paddlers. It keeps the sun out of my eyes. It's kind of big, but it's got a lot of shade under here. Oh man, spring equinox is a time when all the boaters come down here, man. It's just like expected peeper frogs and the kayakers to show up. Old friendships are renewed, stories of river adventures are exchanged, and then there's the challenge of the race course. Included in this group are two young women, Colleen Hickey and Cindy Kretzer, who have embraced this exciting sport with a passion. Well, a long time ago, my grandmother started canoeing, and she took me out to uh, North Carolina for one summer when I was 11, and I went whitewater rafting, and I really liked that. Today I'm warming up and getting a feel for the course and what it's like today, and getting used to where the gates are. She's my competition. Uh, Colleen Hickey, she is the best boater I've ever seen. I think she's 16, and she's been in the Junior Olympics. She is phenomenal. She's a real speed demon. I started when I was 12. My dad got me into it because we always used to go on float trips when I was little and I always stayed interested. It's so exhilarating. It's like some people don't understand how you can kayak and how it can be fun. And it's like once you the waves start hitting you and it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Sometimes like when at the big competition, it's like the butterfly nervous feeling because you're trying to do good and then you're trying not to worry about what the other people are doing. But at the state races, it's more of just like an excite, like excited feeling. You're walking around up, up there, there's a lot of low uh, strings and wires, uh, be aware, be careful. It's just fun to be around people that share your interest in nature and kayaking and they really support you on the river and 
help you learn. It's just so, they're so awesome to hang out with, too. The safety boaters and race officials are in position. The course is set. The Missouri Whitewater Championship will begin shortly. But first... The clear white water of the St. Francis isn't the only place to find adventure on Missouri's waters. On Truman Lake, some young fishermen are learning just how big a fish can be at Willie's Carp Camp. Look at that. Look at that. These look good, too. Sean, good job. Eight pounds. That's an eight pounder. Seems like they're catching more with corn than they are with the dough bait. But they're catching a few with dough bait, too. You having a bite? OK, you're doing real good. Phew, I got a big whale. But it's a beaut. Keep going. I can't. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, come here, hold him, Quinn. No, no right here, right here, just I like can't this. Hold him, sure, you can't come in. Come on, bring your hand. I can't hold him. I show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Get, take this hand out. All right, grab him right here. Grab this right here. Can you hold him? Feel, can you feel him? You got him? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh man, he's heavy, isn't he? You want to kiss him? A lot of the kids, uh, they probably hadn't caught fish like this. And so this is a good chance to get to see a nice sized fish. And they've caught it themselves. Oh my, keep reeling, keep reeling in. Woo, my gosh, Sean. Sean, look at that one. My lord, Sean. That's a big one. Sean, can you hold him? Can you hold him? You grab right there. You got him? You got him? Yeah. Sure? Sean. I think he's about 10 something. Yeah, he's a little over 10. Most of the kids are in the house playing Nintendo or, or something. And, and our, our object of this game is to get these kids to do a lifetime skill. They don't have to compete with the football team. They don't have to compete with the cheerleader. They can just come out here on their own. Easy well. <laughs> Now you'll catch another one. Oh, you'll catch now you guys give you guys high five because you both caught a fish. Give him a high five. There you go. There you go. That was a big one. You caught a dandy, my man. on the St. Francis, Cindy, Colleen, and the other contestants are waiting for the beginning of the slalom race. Okay, Before they start, here's a quick primer on whitewater racing. There are two types of races. The slalom, where a boater must maneuver through gates, and the downriver race, just paddling downstream over a longer distance. In the slalom race, boaters must go directly downstream through the green gates. The red gates must be passed going upstream. No one said this was going to be easy. There are various classes of boats as well, often bewildering to the uninitiated. You sit in a kayak and your paddle has two blades. You kneel in a canoe and maneuver your boat with a single-bladed paddle. One more thing about the whitewater races on the St. Francis. There will be a lot of people watching. Number one, can you line up? Okay, let's let him rip. Three, two, one, start. I'm just coming down here to see how everyone runs the gates and See where the rocks are when they sit on <laughs> because trying to avoid those. That's it, a little nervous. Not too bad though. This is Stark. This is Bib 20, female, K1 women's expert. All right. Three, two, one, start. They always tell you don't think about going fast and don't think about doing good. So I don't think about that. I always am thinking, how can I make this move to make it the best I can? Or 
how am I going compared like how fast I can go and just trying to push myself and not thinking about like trying to be the best. All right, Colleen, looking good. Now on course, we're in bed number 67 in the K-1 senior men's plastic quiet class, Joel Redmeyer. Joel, now upstream through the Red Poles of 813. As the slalom racers approach Big Drop Rapids, the rocks of the shut-ins are filled with onlookers. Whitewater racing has become a popular spectator sport. Well, any time that we can draw attention to our beautiful streams in Missouri, it's, it's a positive thing. And we've got the opportunity for a lot of people to come down and experience the St. Francis, uh, beautiful shut-ins down here. And, and the opportunity for the kayakers, of course, is exceptional. A lot of people come from everywhere. We have, we've talked today to people from Minnesota and as far away as Florida that have come for this event and find out what we have to offer on our streams in Missouri. And up approaching Big Rock. Gate 14 in the middle of it. This is pivot off the rock. Right down the tongue. Right now I'm pretty worn out, but I had a good day. I was a little bumpy. Just a blast. Good competition. It was fun. Oh, it's the best place in Missouri. It's so lucky. It's the nicest place in Missouri I know to kayak. Missouri boaters are fortunate to have this fantastic recreational resource right in our own backyard. Let's join some St. Louis kids as they explore the Big Muddy for the first time. Yeah, this is controlled chaos is what we call it. It's exhilarating when the buses show up. Kids are getting off the buses, they're with their groups, and they're looking over at the presentations, and they're excited, and that excitement rubs off on us. I helped uh, staff a booth where we had snakes and toads and other amphibians and salamanders. And the crush of kids was amazing. They were so excited to actually see these animals up, up close. They got to hold them and touch them and see how cool they are. And, and it was a big moment for them. My name is uh, Chad Pagracki. I'm going to talk to you just a few minutes about cleaning up rivers. And then uh, I'm going to open up for questions, OK? I grew up uh, right on the Mississippi River. At the age of 15, I got into uh, commercial shell diving. In the, in, in the six summer seasons that I was out there doing that, I saw the thousands of tires and thousands of barrels that people had just thrown in the river or thrown on the ground that had washed into the river. And I wanted to do something about it. You guys can accomplish anything you guys want in life, no matter if it's for the rivers, the water, whatever, neighborhoods, whatever it may be, you guys can make a big difference, all right? The education event was wonderful. We had literally hundreds of kids running around here learning about their environment and about things related to cleaning up the river. Well, it's an exciting day. Uh, it's about connecting to the river. Uh, these kids uh, were urban and suburban kids who are surrounded by the Missouri and the Mississippi River, but probably had very little opportunity to connect to the river. And it was obvious in interacting with the kids and the teachers that for many of them, being along the river was a new experience. This is their river. in Missouri should take a float trip. It doesn't have to be a challenging whitewater river like the St. Francis. Float streams like the Jack's Fork, the Eleven Point, and the Current offer clear waters, incredible scenery, and a relaxing ride. 
And one family is lucky enough to call Acres Ferry, near the head of the current river, home. We, we, we've got something that's unique, we've got something that's precious. This is our little, little corner of the world right here, you know. I think that, uh, um, you know, I've, I've traveled around quite a bit and I, I, I haven't found any place. I, I like other places in this world and in this country, you know, it's beautiful, but, but it's not Acres Ferry and it, it's, not, uh, it's not our little piece of the world, so that's really what it's all about. The current river and the land that surrounds it has been home to Gene Maggard and his family for generations. It has provided them the resources to carve out a living and a place to raise a family surrounded by natural beauty. Over time, family and land have forged an attachment that runs deep, like the clear springs of the place they call home. The people who lived on this river were definitely a pioneer stock. It, um, you had to be very self-sufficient. Uh, my family uh, came to this country actually around statehood on my mother's side. And uh, my great-grandfather, uh, he uh, of course grew up here and he was before the Civil War. We've been around here a long time. Before the Civil War and, and during the Civil War, it was a very violent, rough time in this part of the country. So my ancestry tells me that, uh, uh, you know, if you, didn't, uh, if you didn't protect yourself and you didn't, uh, you didn't sometimes hide, the uh, bushwhackers would ride in and uh, they even kill people in this part of the country. And, Thank God my family made it through that period. My granddad around the uh, turn of the century was rafting logs down the river to sell at Van Buren and so forth and the uh, tie rafting days. At one time they said that he had seven mills in operation between here and Cedar Grove. Uh, they used mules for logging, uh, skidding the logs out and then they, uh, they would skid them to the river and they would stockpile them, uh, you know, and, and uh, then they'd wait for the river to come up in the spring and then they would, uh, uh, when the river got up to a certain height, then they would, uh, they would do what they call a log drive and, and uh, once you start one of those log drives, <laughs> there's only one, one stopping that's at the end. Historic Maggard's Cabin sits on a hill above the river and was home to several of Gene's ancestors. Some folks say that it played host to a famous visitor. The cabin predates my grandfather. So it, uh, matter of fact, Jesse James rode through there and had breakfast every now and then at that cabin. So but it is on the historical register and uh, it is preserved. And the reason for Maggard's Cabin is to give people a look at how people live in this part of the country around Jesse James's time. Everywhere you look, you get a sense of the beauty and history of this place. The bars of sand and gravel that serve the floaters of today were home to encampments of Depression-era drifters in the 1930s. They came here in the summer to escape the heat of the city and catch a free meal that the current river might provide. Back then, the family had a grocery store serving the community of Acres. The store the family operates today still has groceries, but times have changed. Now it also offers customers a range of products and services they might need for their trip down the river. And if you're looking for a little free advice on where the fish are biting, Gene is happy to draw on a lifetime of experience to and, assist uh, you. You can access all those good fishing holes and right there where the spring runs in. Um, I was just up there yesterday and it's beautiful. Beautiful fishing right now. Uh, when you get up to uh, Welch, you just walk right up the uh, side of the river, up to Welch Spring there. Wherever you wander around these parts, the focus always returns to the current river. People from near and far come to the Ozarks to experience the beauty of this clear, spring-fed river. 
and the Maggard family has been outfitting these folks for over half a century. They operate 460 canoes on the Upper Current River and 100 on the Jack's Fork. Over the years, since the time the Maggard family began setting folks on their way down the river, they have outfitted close to 16 million floaters. You might think it would get old. I don't look at this work as a drudgery. I look at it as a labor of love, you know. Welcome to Acres Ferry, come on. Several ferries used to cross the upper current. Today, only Acres Ferry remains in service, still providing reliable transport for local residents and a unique crossing experience for tourists. And we're underway. Now it, uh, it's uh, 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 started existence in 1949 and it grew out of a need for people to get limestone from the south bank to the north bank. Thanks, sir. Come back and see us. The Maggards and their ancestors have had a long relationship with this land, its river, and the unspoiled world where they still work and play. It's a home that they cherish and a place they're thrilled to see others experience and enjoy. My family has always had a love for, for, the, for the river and for the people. One thing that we, we as a family have tried to, to drive home is that, uh, you know, you leave here refreshed, you leave here with a memory, a good memory, you know, and, uh, and catch a little of our spirit. of the slalom race, the tired racers have one last challenge, the downriver race. No gates, no crowds, just a big stretch of river ahead of them and a lot of paddling. Those competitors here today, those boaters who are interested in the downriver race, here's the time frame you need to be aware of. Everyone participating in that race needs to be ready to roll at the Highway 72 bridge over the St. Francis River at 4 o'clock. We're going to be cutting a little close to that regard. We're doing a downriver run, and it's a mile of warm-up first, and then it's they start us like a mile down the river from right here, and you race as fast as you can down the river, and first, like, the fastest time wins. <laughs> and I'm doing that with my dad. I'll be bossing him around, and I'm proud to say that. Most people have like a sport and all they do is practice in a gym, but you get to practice on rivers in the summer and it's beautiful weather and all the people you meet and every time you're on a different river, it's something new and it's just it's gorgeous. After a lengthy stretch of river and almost an hour of hard paddling, the down river racers near the finish line. finished first in her class in the downriver race and respectably in the middle of the field in the slalom. As expected, Colleen dominated the slalom race, taking first in the expert women's class and finishing fourth overall. But in the downriver race, the father-daughter team learned that teamwork is essential, even for expert paddlers. Colleen and her dad were still on the course as the sun was going down. 
From our big rivers to our Ozark streams, Missouri's water resources are amazing. Lakes, streams, springs, it's all there for you to enjoy. So get your feet wet, catch a fish, take a float, or challenge a whitewater rapids. Get out and enjoy Missouri outdoors.